All right, everyone, it's eight o'clock. Thanks for joining us. This will be our final five person training session and actually our, our final deep three session, at least formally, for this group. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with one play from the Lumen Christi uh, Napoleon game from last week. Now, this is, uh, this is a punt uh, early in the game. And for all I know, this was the first punt of the game. But notice over here to the right of the screen, we have a formation that includes uh, whatever you want to call it, a square, a block four. Um, now, this should get our attention, and they don't line up this way without some sort of purpose. And um, so we need to be high alert in these situations, uh, and probably what they're doing showing this early is to try to get an idea how the defense will, uh, will try to guard against what this formation is doing, so they'll have an idea what play they want to call in the future if they want to do something other than punt the ball. Now, in this particular case, they go ahead and kick. And by the way, someone let me know if this is running choppy. What we're going to have here is a fair catch signal by uh, the kick returner. Actually, he did not signal for a fair catch here. And he gets hit. That was really my point, and that is that um, if this kick returner wants protection, he needs to give a fair catch signal, which he does not. And you'll notice here when we go frame by frame that the kick returner is legal, comes up and makes a legal hit against the kick returner. Now, <clears throat> probably our back judge is processing everything that just happened here, replaying it. It is in his mind in terms of is this kick, kitsch kick interference or whether it's a legal kick. He starts out in really good position. <clears throat> the thing that we've got to guard against here is either a fumble or a muff by this kick returner that would cause the ball to kick back towards the opposite goal line. So we know at the end of this play, we're going to put it on a yard line. So there's absolutely no reason back judges to hurry up here. Let this play finish, stay back there, make sure everything is calm, and then come up and mark our spot. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of clips here. And you might think that uh, Bob and I talk at nauseum about the importance of finishing plays and not being in a hurry to move on to our next task, to let the play settle down. The area that I want you to concentrate on is the official that comes into the field here, uh, which I believe to be the umpire. And notice how quickly he looks for a new ball. Is this smooth or choppy? It's a mixture, Rich. Okay, all right. So now we're in the process of the return. Um, got a little wedge action going on there. Uh, it's going to come up. Now we've got some active blocking, certainly some active engagements with players. So we have lots of opposite jersey colors. Now look, we still got people moving. And we're looking for a new ball. We just can't do this. We have to allow players to separate, moving in opposite directions. Then we'll still have plenty of time to get a new ball uh, and get it spotted at the sideline. So then, um, same game, a little bit later. I'll let it run too quick. All right, so now we're on the return and we've got our back judge and our umpire who have moved up into, you can see our umpire right here is between the numbers and the hash. Now watch what happens, bad habits. See, we're looking for a new ball. We're heading this way. We totally miss what's going on over here. We have no idea what's taking place. Now, maybe we can get some support from our, our uh, short wing coming up, 
but we're not finishing plays. This really has not ended. You know, we've got players around the pile. This runner is just in the process of going down, and we're running over here looking for a new ball. We got to slow down. I right, know what we're going to get here after coming out of a scramble is a long pass that's going to go downfield. Now, what I want to point out here is that, as we've been saying, whether it be five or seven, distance is our friend. Um, and we get our back judge right on the goal line, right in the middle of the field, right where he belongs. And we should be getting progression coming down the field. This is first half. So this is probably going to be our line judge. But this is really, real, really well done by our back judge getting the depth, getting set at the goal line, and letting this play happen. And now this is going to be a running play that's also going to go a fair distance. And once again, our back judge is going to read and react. He's going to see this play developing. Right now it's going to break. And he's going to come into the picture here shortly. Stationary at the goal line. Now we only get to the goal line stationary in a stationary position if we read and react. We've got to start at the right spot on the field, which is a minimum of 25 yards off the line of scrimmage. And then we need to give ground as appropriate. And when we recognize that we need to give ground, we need to do so with a full commitment not cruise control to see if half speed will get us where we need to go. We need to commit to the cushion and then slow down if necessary or appropriate. Good job by the back judge on succeeding plays here. Great job by our back judge on the end line. I'll replay that. I'm sure that was choppy as I'll get out. But we're snapping from, looks like about the 16-yard line. Excuse me, the 11-yard line. All right, so we've got our back judge on the end line. That's the line we need to protect. We know that our short wings are going to handle the goal line. Play action pass. We get out here. We've got action here in the middle. We should have our short wing looking at this. Uh, this probably came into the attention of the back judge. We go back to the formation. Um, we've got two receivers to both sides of the field. And this is uh, 53. So uh, this is first half. So he's going to be over here on this side of the field with the line judge. Wait, first half line judge is over here. So he's going to be on this side of the field. So this should come into his attention rather quickly. Maybe some restriction there, but he gets off of whatever was, was there. We got a couple of receivers that are potentially in position to catch. And now we got a decision to make in terms of the end line. Now, this may well require us to coordinate with the short wing because the key here is going to be when does this player secure firm control of the ball? Now, the back judge is going to be able to see the line relative to feet, but what he's not going to know is when hands are securely on um, that football. Now, it appears that we do a little toe tap on the end line or near the end line. We can't tell where that foot is right now. Maybe it's out of bounds. I uh, can't tell you from that look. But what we end up with is the ruling that it's a touchback. You can see we stopped the clock and we're about to rule touchback. So there should be some collaboration here between these two officials. You know, uh, when did he gain firm control? It's one of the weaknesses of five-person mechanics, but we've got to do the best we can 
uh, in this situation to make sure that we share information in terms of when the ball is secured. All right, um, clip 71. This is gonna be a great awareness of time score and situation by the first half. So this is the H. What you're gonna see is this play is gonna develop and he's gonna look back at the coach to find out what the coach, if the coach wants to take a timeout. We're gonna have a run that goes up somewhere around the 45, 46 yard line. Watch the official at the bottom of the screen. He's signaling the ball is dead. And now he's looking back at the coach and recognizing a timeout. So we're gonna get on the whistle here, stop the game clock. We're going to check the board to make sure that the clock stops at the appropriate time. And if not, we're gonna do a clock correction. So nice job by this official. This is what we need to do. Everybody on the field, if you have O2O, you should be communicating with, other, with each other to remind everyone on the crew that uh, time is of the essence and that we may well have timeouts coming from, uh, in this case, Team A. All right, um, this is a play in the same series. Now this is gonna be hurry up offense. Uh, so obviously they've taken a timeout. They're looking to score before the end of the half. So we have to take this into consideration with how we handle our business. We're gonna get a pass that's gonna go downfield. Back judge does a nice job with depth, staying in the middle of the field. Uh, got a nice angle here to judge in terms of see between players and also to confirm that the catching process is completed. Shoot, I hit the wrong button. Receiver survives the ground, we've got a catch, all right? Properly, we're stopping the game clock because we made the line to gain. Now keep in mind what team A is gonna do. Team A knows that the clock is gonna start on the ready for play. So they're gonna hustle to the line. And because this pass is completed inside the 20, we're gonna want our back judge to be, since it's inside the 20, on the end line to begin. So that's gonna be a fair distance for this official to travel. And what he's gonna do is he's gonna come down here and get the ball and bring it into the umpire which means then after he gives the ball to the umpire, now he's got to give ground. Now, if this happens, referee, don't make the ball ready for play until you get your back judge back into position. Now, the other part of that, and the reason why the back judge should not be involved in marking progress or helping get the ball to the hash, is that we do have a dead clock. So, we don't need to rush the ball into the umpire because we're not going to snap until the referee says we can anyway. So there's really no reason for the back judge to get involved, but this is the this is a play in this same series. Now this is going to be um, scramble. Deep throw, kind of a Hail Mary situation. You can see our back judge has backed up. He's probably a step from the end line. My preference would be, particularly when you get this far into the end zone, that you go all the way to the end zone so that you don't have to find it. You're already there. But at least we're out of harm's way in terms of having some depth here. And now we can move and make decisions if necessary uh, relative to what happens to the ball. Now, in this particular case, uh, it's incomplete. Now, the final teaching point here is we still have opponents in close proximity to each other. So watch our back judge. He leaves the players to get the ball. The clock is stopped. There is no hurry for us to get the ball. Finish this by getting players separated, 
Once we get them separated on their way to their respective huddles or sidelines, now we'll retrieve the ball. Not right now. While we've got two blue players and it looks like four white players in the same vicinity. All right, let's see, 112. This is, this is a key play in the game. Keep that in mind. Uh, Hastings is behind. Uh, this is fourth down. And watch what happens at the top of the screen. Both players looking back at the ball. That's key. Okay, there's some stumbling around. Both players go down. Receiver, understandably, wants pass interference. This is feed entanglement, and this is a real gutsy call by this back judge not to ring one up here. Remember, when we have uh, both players looking back at the ball, or neither player looking back at the ball, if they get their feet tangled up, it's nothing. Where it's a foul is if there's feet entanglement, but one or the other is not playing the ball. All right, now this is gonna be a solo play for our um, headlinesman at the top of the screen. Based on this formation, we know that back judge is gonna be shading towards the line judge's side of the field. And we're gonna get a whole bunch of activity over here at the top of the screen that's all gonna to belong to the headlinesman. You're gonna get blocks in here, which should draw his first attention. And then you're gonna get a block out here at the corner By now, the back judge should have transitioned and should be helping out with this particular block. But early on, this is all decision-making that has to be made by this one official. So if, if we get real tunnel vision here, we're gonna miss some things. So what we need to do is we need to prioritize and the first order of business, of course, is gonna be this block at the corner. But once we clear this block, then we need to turn our attention downfield to the next active engagement by opponents. We can't count on the fact that the back judge is going to get over here until maybe right now. And it's going to be pretty tough for him to see the beginning of this engagement uh, because of the transition time that it took for him to get from the other side of the field over to here. We can't expect that he would help with this block. So this is something that you should talk about in your crew meetings before your games heading into week three of the playoffs. And as you can see, this goes all the way for a score. All right, we're back to that first place. So now let's, Bob, are you ready to go or you want me to keep on going? I am. You ready to roll? Sure. All right, well, let, I've got just a couple plays here, and then I'll turn it back to you. Okay. Uh, just wanted to make uh, – oops, that's the wrong one. Uh, right here. This uh, was Muskegon High against Mona Shores, so they're both from the same community. They're big rivals, and they got after it in this game. This was a great game. It must have been a lot of fun to work. All right, this first – uh, play is going to be a potential targeting by the second man in. So I'm going to let this run until we get to the mesh point. All right, so now we got to change of possession. Now, you know, we can debate whether we've got a foul here in the spirit of um, making sure that we have quality fouls probably not one, both playing the ball. Now we can have a change of possession. All right, now watch what happens as we come up the sideline and as this runner is slowed down. This man right here is the one that we're looking at. Now I'm slowing it down for you. 
crown is exposed, he's still a run. Well, okay, I know there's a difference between federation and college here, but this is going to be a high hit. Now, whether that's a correct no call or not, the operative factor that we need to talk about is the awareness of the second player coming in. Most of our targeting fouls or UNR fouls that like we determined last week, Bob, you may want to weigh in on this, uh, come from the second player rather than the original tackling player. And this player coming in right here is going to make high contact. So Bob, you want to weigh in on this? I, I simply to say that I agree with you. I think that's a good point. <clears throat> so do you see a foul here or is this uh, legal? You know, it's just blurry enough that uh, I, I don't have enough to give an answer, but my my instinct is that he's got his head in front and makes more contact with his shoulder mm -hmm. than with his helmet. Now, watch as this play develops. And just a reminder that regardless of how plays end, we need to make sure that we finish them with good dead ball officiating. Because watch what happens as this, uh, this original Team A player uh, gets up near the opponent's bench. Number four has got something to say about that hit that takes place. little shove into a person coming into the game. And then when he gets over near the sideline, he gets a little more from that guy right at the end of the play. Did you see it? Yes. So we need to, whether there's a foul there or not, the operative points here are to make sure that we finish plays and that we have people around the bench if we can possibly get them there. We should have our short wing coming up. Our back judge may be coming in. Again, this is a shortcoming of five person mechanics with, with seven, we would have uh, a short wing that would be in here cleaning this up with the deep wing coming from the rear. All right, this next clip is going to be 27. Uh, this is going to be a, a run to the strong side, and we need to look at our transition blocking. So we're going to get a run up here to the top of the screen. So we're going to have the benefit right off the bat of the back judge involved in this. So our first decision is here at the corner. That's going to be the responsibility of the line judge. Now, once the line judge clears this block, now he needs to look downfield. We should all get also get support from our back judge but we've got other players engaged here. So we need to work this from the backside. Short wing needs to clean up behind. Umpire, well, and referee as well. Umpire needs to go front side here to clean up because we do still have active engagements over here at the top of the screen. All right, now he cuts back. Now, here's a, an argument for keeping the back judge in the center of the field. Now, he does a really nice job pirouetting here. And the only reason why he can do that is he's got a good cushion. So now we've got to deal with this block because if this runner cuts back, we got a potential block in the back. What he's going to do here is basically set a basketball screen. Not enough for a foul. Now we also have 
a, a block coming from this side. So there's lots of activity that's going on here. The more depth you have, the greater opportunity you have to see not only the blocks in terms of their origin and how they finish, but also multiple players blocking, and then transitioning from one block to another. Now, this guy gets in front of this uh, defensive player. This looks like a clean block to me, but it appears also that after the back judge pirouettes, he slows down. And I'm not sure why he slows down. See, we're, oh, okay, now I guess we better get started again. And we're slow getting to the goal line. Now, as luck would have it, the run ended at about the two or three yard line. But we've got to be very aware of getting to that goal line and knowing where we are on the field. Uh, number 33. Um, this is going to be a directional free kick. You know, we've talked about all the nuances in the kicking game. Quick kicks, short kicks, uh, mid-range kicks. Here is a directional kick that would be a version of a mid-range kick. This kicker is going to try to dump the ball over here towards the sideline with the idea that his teammates are going to be able to converge and limit this return uh, to a small one. This is very similar to what happens uh, in, in the punting game, where punters will try to kick the ball to a third of the field so that uh, the teammates are only defending maybe half of the field as opposed to the full width of the field. So that's what's happening here just in a free kick. You can see it isn't clean, cleanly, uh, cleanly fielded, and it's loose for a period of time, eventually picked up. Now, the other thing to note here is that our short wing really over pursues. There is no need to hustle up here to be side by side with this kick returner. We want to stay behind it. Um, it will help us with blocking angles. And it will also help us in the event that something happens like what occurs here. See, so he's driven backwards and now we're ahead of it and we're, we're concerned about getting forward progress as opposed to staying behind this play. Now the referee does a nice job cleaning up behind, but short wings, if we stay behind this, let this finish, clean this action up, then eventually we can step up to our forward progress spot. We might also get forward progress spot with cross field mechanics coming from the opposite short wing. But we know we're going to put it on a yard line. Is it that big of a deal that we put it on the 24 than the 25? No. So this is a low priority getting to this spot. The more important priority is to stay behind it and help clean up. And... The wide receiver at the top is one-on-one. -on -one. We need to be aware that this is a fade pattern in the making just due to our pre-snap routine. And right off the bat, he shows us what he has in mind. A defensive back comes up, somewhat confronts him, uh, receiver reaches out, no problem there. They separate a uh, slight uh, little hesitation on the part of the receiver here. If you threw on this and called it DH, uh, would probably support it. Yes, I would support it. But um, he is able to get clear of this and run his route. Now, this is where the fun begins. We're just beginning to leave the line of scrimmage. I get that. I get that because the quarterback is moving in that general direction. But now once the ball is airborne, we need to get some distance down the field and get set because as you can see, what we're going to get is something right at the sideline. Looks like it's short of the pylon. The back judge is going to be able to perhaps help with the catch, no catch, 
but he's going to have no idea in terms of where the feet are. So once again, we need to do a good job with our coordination. If back judge has catch, which appears to be the case here, then what he needs to do is to look back to our line of scrimmage official for sideline confirmation, and then we're going to come down and have a forward progress spot. All right, this is 63. Um, this is a good no call. Both of these players are going to equally contest for this ball. And I'm going too fast. We'll back that up. Now, the only thing that I would say here is from a back judge's perspective, it looks like they're both contesting for the ball. What the short wing might have to make a determination on is this left arm by the defensive back. Does the defensive back pull this receiver down with that arm, causing him to go to the ground? We're not going to be able to tell from that view. Once again, if we had a deep wing, we'd have someone, Johnny, on the spot to be able to help out with that ruling. So back judge is not really going to know what causes this player to go down. The short wing is the person that's going to have to make that determination whether there's enough there for a foul or not. Rich, we'd probably like that back judge to become stationary a little sooner in this play too, wouldn't we? Is he starting the goal line? As the ball is, he's probably fine just staying at the goal line. It, it really doesn't threaten the, the back third or half of the end zone. And uh, and the whole time the ball is getting close to the players, he's still moving. I would agree with that. The ball is coming down in the vicinity of, of the goal line. Um, I, I would say that if we're going to move, we definitely want to move back towards the end line as opposed to coming towards it. This does afford us the opportunity to have an angle, but Bob makes a good point in terms of we're really not far enough into the end zone to justify going all the way to the end line. Um, the thing that I, if you do stay at the goal line, you know, you need to have those knees bent prepared to make a dynamic move to get back towards the end line in the event that this ball is tipped around. Now, with only the two of them and both of them going to the turf, there's not likely to be any threat to the end line. But if they're both upright, then most definitely there would be a possibility that the ball would be batted or muffed. Certainly, if there was another player or two in that vicinity, the same thing would apply. Good point, Bob. You're just about up here. I got, I believe, two more plays here. Okay. All right, now this is going to be a trick play. And the thing that we've got to do, we're probably not going to see trick plays in our scouting because they've uh, more than likely saved these plays in the event that they need to bring them at a certain point. But you can see they're down by two scores. It's second half. So mentally, we've got to be thinking, what do they have in their bag of tricks? What might we see here? And we got to make sure that we don't take the bait. The defense might take the bait, but we're not going to. All right, so what we're going to get is an obvious backwards. Well, I don't know that it's obvious, but it's a backward pass. So that's the first thing that we need to rule on is forward or backwards. If it's forward, we got another sort of a problem because we have a second pass. Now, as you can see, the defense did take the bait, but the back judge did not. Back judge is going to come into play here and he is moving. He is on the move right now. Is gonna get pretty close to the goal line as this player scores. So we have to be alert, back judges. There's no need to move up too quickly. Distance is your friend. 
You see a foul, we get a, the flag going in the general direction. We'll relocate the flag. Distance is your friend. Distance is your friend. All right, last clip, Bob, and then it's all yours. This should be 103. Um, this is going to be a correct call for pass interference. Um, watch what the defensive back does to the receiver's shoulder. Okay, we've got two moves here. This is the guy that eventually is going to run the deep route. Now we're in chase mode. Watch the defensive back's right arm. And the back judge is going to recognize this and throw the flag. If the defensive back does not put his arm on the shoulder of the receiver and simply goes up and competes for the ball, we don't have a foul. But the back judge recognized early contact, certainly a situation that put the defensive back in an unfair dominant position through the flag for DPI, correct call. All right, Bob, let's uh, let's transition to you. I've got a couple more plays uh, from uh, a few more games uh, that we'll get to after yours. So I'll stop my share and we'll turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, let's go here. <clears throat> All right, the, the first play we, act, we have actually two different angles. So I'm gonna, gonna just let the first play go and give you give you a sense of you know what's going on and where where all five of us are standing as this goes on. The the player we're watching is number two right here. He has the ball. And he's gonna get hit at the end. Pretty hard. That may be high. Honestly, the, the umpire might have had the best look on this play, but he's in good position and might just be too close. Not, not his fault. That's He's in the right spot. And the next angle from this same play is just a little bit closer. whether we would call that targeting. We have to make the determination if there's enough force and if it's initiated above the shoulders. Back judge might actually be blocked out by the player who's making the hit. The line judge who's down on to the bottom of the screen might be blocked out by number 40 and number 53. Headlinesman might actually be blocked by, there's other players up here. If we go back to the other play, there might be blocked also. So it's a, it's a tough spot of the field, <clears throat> but if we see it, what we're looking for is that, that initial contact and if that player is leading with his helmet. This play, I think we're gonna get an interception and return, the uh, line of scrimmage official would be the line judge. Bob, did we lose you? Hello, Bob. Bob's internet is problematic. Say it again, Mike. Bob's internet is problematic. Oh, okay. All right, well, let me, um, while we're getting him back, let me um, I'm, jump I back in there. I didn't realize I was gone. Where, where did oh. I disappear? Uh, we got him back. Are you there, Bob? Yes. 
Where, where, okay. where did I lose you? Um, right when you started that second play, Bob. Okay. Reshare your screen, please. Okay. Thanks, Mike. So interception, back judge sees the play coming and is really set on the goal line, stays and waits for the return to start and then starts following after to watch the blocking. Line judge is getting a little bit of ahead of, ahead of the play, but again, keeping eye on blocking, what we're going to look for is the block by this player right here. Pretty square block in the back. That gets flagged right, right around the runner. So he's he has progress, but he's that's frustrating. So we have a block in the back. Because Agreed. Line judge is keeping his eye on the block and not necessarily following the runner, even though he has progress. Same play, different uh, different angles so that we can see what uh, how the crew moves through this play. Back judge is following. Line of scrimmage guys are both prepared to go to the goal line if they need to, although the referee is certainly going to be there. He's he's keeping real good cushion, looking back for action, probably looking right in this area right now. And the line judge gets the black in the back. So this is interesting in that there's there are already 12 players on offense. And if you notice, we're on, on the uh, the bottom right corner. We're right at about two seconds. I'm just going to let it play. It's not sure exactly when the 12th player came on the field, but nobody's leaving yet. The referee's giving them a chance to recognize that they're supposed to get off the field. We know we have the referee and umpire counting. And then finally, they decide, okay, that's long enough. And we've actually gone 20 seconds from the start of this play. They're supposed to get three, but it gets a little um, harder for us to decide when to start counting when a team is not in a huddle. This may be too long, but trying to give them the benefit of benefit of the doubt certainly recognize that this is taking longer than three seconds and then the offense gets flagged for an illegal substitution. We'd prefer communication between the referee and umpire, but then we do get the foul. Bob, is the three second uh, rule intended to give the defense the opportunity to match up sort of an unofficial um, substitution mechanic i i guess i, I mean I, my opinion is that you know to give the defense three three seconds to match up however we don't hold the snap in any way so i'm not sure what benefit it is to the defense for us to to wait three seconds nonetheless that's the rule so we we officiate what they what they put in the book rather than I'm, I'm not sure what they intended there because in my opinion it doesn't make sense if we were if we were we were preventing the snap then i get it but in this case i don't so i'm not sure where the defense is being disadvantaged 
if we don't wait three seconds. In this particular case, they waited 20 seconds, which is certainly more than enough. Yeah. Uh, snap inside the 15 yard line. The back judge is going to be on the end line. This place is just, just a reminder that we'd like the uh, line of scrimmage guys to work to the goal line. If the play ends before the goal line, we can come back to the spot rather than stop. Bob, Bob might be frozen up. All right, what we're gonna do while we're waiting for Bob is uh, to move ahead and um, We'll get him back here momentarily. Now you know why Gregor is so important to us. All right, uh, a really good tussle in the Grand Rapids area happened up at Rockford uh, this week. Granville won their first round game. So did Rockford, and uh, they they got after it. And um, they had a um, a really good game to work. Ended up being a couple of score game, but uh, very competitive here. Now this this first play is just a reminder that uh, we have to constantly be aware of time, score, and situation. As you can see here, this is fourth down. Uh, we are snapping from the 38-yard line, but uh, we've got fourth down, and it looks like about 17, give or take. So we've got to be thinking this could result in a kick, which is exactly what happens here. So um, everyone, but particularly the back judge, needs to be aware that the goal line may be threatened. And of course, the tip off is the person that is normally in position to take the snap, the quarterback, backs up a couple extra steps, which he does not do in any other situation. That should be our tip off that we've got a quick kick that's coming. Now, in this particular case, uh, we end up with a touchback. But our back judge did a nice job recognizing the potential problem of that given situation. All right, let's go to 58. Bob, are you back yet? All right, we don't have Bob back yet. Is this running smoothly or not? Yes, Rich, it's running pretty smooth for me. Even at full speed? You know, it's not perfect, but I've seen worse. Okay. All right. What we want to do, this is a this is a free kick, and we got to remember we're bringing in the umpire and the back judge to get between the numbers and the hash mark at least. Um, what we're going to get is we're going to get a low block that's going to come from this Team B player and it's a pretty obvious one. And we end up with two flags on it, which is good. We get it from the line of scrimmage official as well as uh, the back judge on this particular play. But we've got to be aware of our keys coming down the field and keep a nice wide view between the umpire and the back judge in terms of the number of players and where they are on the field. All right. Let me know, Bob, when you get back here, if we get him back. All right, here we're going to have um, an obvious short kick. We're expecting it. We've got four in the box. We've got the short wings up, umpire, back judge on the restraining line. But once again, we before this kick ever takes place, 
we want to review between our teammates on the respective sidelines the potential scenarios that are going to come up. You know, first responsibility, of course, are the restraining lines. Once this official, once these officials clear and determine that we are legal with the restraining line, that team A is not violated, all right, now we need to transition, remain stationary, but now we need to be looking for early touching before it goes 10 yards, but especially early blocking. Now, in this particular case, the short kick is not particularly well executed. It is pretty easily recovered by the second guy, and he goes down. So it happens pretty smoothly, pretty quickly, but we've seen other short kicks uh, during the season and during our training sessions that got knocked around. We've seen early blocking. We've seen early touching. And of course, the thing that we need to make sure that we do is if we have an early touch, we need to get a bean bag down at the corresponding yard line. Make sure that if you do need to toss your bean bag as opposed to drop it, make sure that that bag ends up on the negative side of that restraining line. We don't want that bag to end up on, on the line. We want it to be clearly short of the restraining line. And we can later adjust the bag. We can adjust where the illegal touching occurred, but we need to make sure that the bag is on the right side of the line. Likewise, if we have a block, we need to make sure we get a flag down, we get a number, and we let the play go through to its conclusion. Because if team B is able to recover the ball, then they're going to have the option to have that foul tacked onto the end of, well, where they recovered the ball, as opposed to if team A gets it, then they're going to have to re-kick. There are two angles on this play. I'm going to give you the first in that there's, um, I'll give it full screen. Um, there is potential for pass interference down here in the corner. I think the contact that creates the, the, uh, the, the receiver falling to the ground happens after the interception. And then there's a long return. I'm going to skip ahead to what happens after, after the player goes out of bounds. And this is a, a little bit what you were talking about earlier, Rich, where we're getting a ball. Certainly, the players seem to have separated here anyhow. That's not good. No. Are you still there, Bob? I'm okay. Here. I, I, it is. The player who intercepts the ball flips it to the referee who catches the ball, and the players have separated. I'm going to skip to the end of the next play real quick here and let this play. Is that clear enough for everybody to see what's going on? Yeah, even on a small screen, we can see a celebration, an orchestrated uh, little routine. You know, and if, if this happens on the sideline, great. But out in the middle of the field, no. So um, I want to... This is a great time for us to thank Gregor Langman. You know, uh, all the work that we've put in since August, all of the sessions that we've conducted, the quality of video that we've had, the smoothness of the technology uh, comes back to Gregor. And it, it actually was fitting that we went without Gregor tonight because you could see how important he is to this process. So uh, my hat is off to Gregor. Thank you very much. And we look forward to uh, additional training sessions in 24. Um, would also like to thank 
Bob Foss for the last three weeks. Um, his contributions have helped a great deal as we've transitioned from seven to five and provided some good instruction and reminders, even if you've been in five-person mechanics all year. So thank you, Bob, for bringing uh, the expertise and also people from your group to this study session. We appreciate it very much. Lastly, I'd like to thank all of you. Many of you have been with us since August when we started on this, uh, this merry activity, and we've had fun with it. Uh, we haven't always agreed on plays, and that's part of the fun, and it's part of why we do it, because the more we talk about football, the better off we're all going to be. So I want to thank everyone for your loyal participation, whether it be in person or from the recorded version. Uh, once again, a reminder that, uh, you know, we have regional finals this week, and there's a lot on the line. So we need to make sure that our preparation remains sharp. This is uh, Tuesday night. You still have two full days of quality uh, preparation that you can put into film study with the teams, uh, conversation with your crewmates, uh, all sorts of things so that we're ready to rock and roll on Friday night. So uh, with that, Let's be the best team on the field Friday, and let's send the best teams forward into those semifinals. So again, thank you for your participation and your attention tonight, and uh, stay ready to work. You just never know what's going to happen from day to day, hour to hour. Uh, you might get that call and have an opportunity to go someplace and contribute to the great experience of uh, high school playoff football. So go get them, uh, have a great evening, and stay safe. Good night, everyone.